presidential tier list. Let's do it. This was the worst idea I ever had. Yes, my channel has a long history of being accused of only containing opinions and not containing objective facts about just the things that happened. So in order to give those guys exactly what they want and nothing more or less, I decided to make the ultimate non-partial, objective, rational, alpha male presidential tier list based on three critical factors. Factor one, pros, good things that they did, cons, bad things that they did, and the all important smash or pass. Why am I, why am I doing this? Well, now I got these scars. All right, number one, George Washington, Georgie Wash, King George the first, President Washington, Pros, first president. I think that being a trailblazer is important. Liked religious freedom, cool, love that. We love a religious freedom. Three, hated political parties, cool. I'm on that, I'm on that, I'm on that route as well. Cons, owned hundreds of slaves. Hmm. And like, you know, people might try to say, oh, you know, it was the context of the time. It was normal to own slavery. The thing is, is that there were abolitionists in the 1790s and People lobbied George Washington specifically to stop the horrible act of slavery. And he didn't. Not up until his dying day. He espoused the concept of freedom for everyone, except for all the people he had enslaved. In fact, the only laws that he passed that regarded slavery during his time in office were things like the Fugitive Slave Act, which made it harder and made punishments harsher for people who tried to help slaves escape their conditions. Oh, there was also a tax rebellion called the Whiskey Rebellion that happened early in the country's history. You'd think that in America, people might have some sympathy to something like a tax rebellion. Today, gentlemen, we sing our flaming spear into the hearts of the rich. What the hell are you doing? But instead, George Washington is to this day still the only current acting president who commanded troops in battle as he sent troops to attack his own people. He, like many presidents, also stole a whole bunch of indigenous territory, probably the most famous being the Northwest Indian War, in which he not only stole a ton of territory from indigenous people, he committed an even worse crime by intentionally adding Ohio to United States territory. And as we all know, the Buckeye State continues to be a blight on human existence to this very day. Plus, he's also from Virginia, which I don't even need to describe why it's bad. Now on Smasher Pass, I don't necessarily dig the wig, but he does have a reputation for being rather dogged. Like, you know, he won't finish till you finish, you know? Which I appreciate. I appreciate an effort. So I'm gonna go and smash on this one, but I do think that given the slave owner aspect and the indigenous territory capture, I'm going to have to put George Washington under the F tier. I apologize. I know this is a bit unexpected, but here we go. Uh, John Adams pissed off Alexander Hamilton, already on board didn't own slaves, which in this time I guess needs a gold star. He seemed to have a decent amount of respect for his wife, which in this day and age was not that common. So go off, John, <laughs> go off, John Adams. Cons, after the French ended up being critical allies in America's fight to overthrow their monarchy, when the French were overthrowing their monarchy, the Americans were nowhere to be seen. He also passed the Alien and Sedition Act, which was a law intentionally made to make it harder to immigrate to the United States and also make burning the government too hard a crime, which of course all stems from the fact that he's from Massachusetts, which I don't even think I need to describe to you why that's bad. As for Smash or Pass, well, he was known for being passionate and for listening to his partner, responsive and passionate, I'm gonna give a smash. But I will say for trying to make it a crime to criticize the state, this one I think I'm going to have to put John Adams in F tier, I think that makes sense. Now Thomas Jefferson has one really good pro and that is that he funded the 1990s TV show, Lois and Clark, a very fun kind of romantic lighthearted take on the Superman franchise. Not... I'm getting word that what he funded was Lewis and Clark, which is less fun. Um, and that was the only pro I had because not only was he a slave owner, but he had uh, inappropriate sexual relations with a teenager who was also one of his slaves. He had assimilationist policies to native people and he's responsible for the Louisiana Purchase, which I think 
was the biggest mistake in American history because now there are tons of American cities with French names and Americans seem to have no compunction about butchering the language of my ancestors in ways that drive me insane. Terre Haute, Louisville, Versailles. I got a bunch of shit in one of my videos for talking about Carol Delin. No, no. Shut it down, shut it down. And also he intentionally tried to add Florida to the United States and is the model for a lot of modern day libertarians. F tier. And on Smasher Pass, this guy is a total Sigma male. No, pass, F tier. Thomas Jefferson, canceled. Is this, is this whole wheat? It's like, it's like bits in it. All right, let's continue. We got 46 of these goddamn things to get through. Let's do James Madison. You remember Madison? Famous president that everyone knows. Madison's famous for doing really cool projects for the United States, like, um, uh, he made a central bank that doesn't exist anymore and only lasted like a couple decades. Uh, he did the War of 1812, which I'm going to put as a con because I live in a country that was invaded during that war. And of course, he did a lot of the typical things of presidents at this time, which was uh, displacing Native Americans from their lands and owned slaves. So, mm -mm. nope, can't give that a pass. Now, on the Smasher Pass question, we do have a couple important things to consider. He is responsible for ushering in what's called the era of good feelings, which, you know, could have some horny connotations. He also seemed to be a little too obsessed with his work, which does mm, decrease the attractiveness. I think that uh, the more checked out a president is, the better off they'll do because the less work they'll actually do. But let's take a look at that picture. Oh, smash, smash. I'm not proud of this one, but smash. But yeah, because of the War of 1812 and the whole slavery thing, I'm going to have to give Madison F tier. Now, we went on from James Madison to the other distinct human being, James Monroe. <laughs> now, James Monroe, fan of infrastructure. Awesome. Big fan of infrastructure here at Step Back. He also is responsible for the absolute shit show that is the Canadian border today, which I love making an absolute mess of geopolitical borders. Makes the teenagers who play paradox games very upset. Border gore absolutely gets a thumbs up from me. As for cons, he did do a few things that I think we should look down upon, like the Missouri Compromise, which didn't answer the question of slavery and might have prevented a civil war if he had taken any stance whatsoever. But unfortunately, he went through with this anyway and just kind of kicked the can down the road until the problem was a lot worse. He's also the namesake for the Monroe Doctrine, which had started as a way to say that Europeans shouldn't intervene in like Latin America, but has essentially turned into the United States claiming all of Latin America as its zone of influence and being able to intervene in their politics whenever they see fit. It's led to probably one of the most disgusting uh, foreign policy doctrines of the United States. So not a fan. Also, he successfully added Florida to the country. And on top of that, also added five states that I think we can all admit are among the worst in the country, like Mississippi, Alabama, Illinois, Maine, and Missouri. Now, as far as Smasher Pass goes, Monroe was known for being mm, a fan of chivalry and maybe a little bit too dedicated to his partner, comes off as a little desperate. Mm smash yeah let's go with it but i gotta say for the missouri compromise and the monroe doctrine i'm unfortunately uh in this case going to have to give james monroe an f tier i'm surprised i haven't sneezed like once during all this all right moving on to john quincy adams not john adams but john quincy adams two other distinct human beings the like what third john in a row how many johns are we up to one no, wait. Oh, no. They're all James. So this is only the second John. It's only the second John Adams. Jesus Christ. Nobody had any imagination back then. Like one bill. Let's get like one bill in there. Anyways, pros for John Quincy Adams. Um, road. Road builder. Tried to connect the country together. We like roads. Yay for roads. Uh, John Quincy Adams also had uh, kind of a disdain for the American Constitution. Uh, that's awesome. I think that we can all agree the Constitution's a mess and uh, the less we listen to it, the better. So disdain for the Constitution, that's a pro. He also repealed the gag rule, which uh, banned any politicians from talking about slavery in Congress. Awesome. He was personally a person who hated slavery, 
double awesome. He also distinctly said that he did not want to conquer Native Americans through blood and conquest, and is the person behind the wonderful quote, which is that America goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy, and he's the president responsible for stopping the wearing of powdered wigs, which I think is key, because those things look awful. Now, there are some cons. He did try to purchase Texas. Ugh, bad look. And he also had John C. Calhoun as his vice president, who might be possibly the most racist person. <laughs> as for Smasher Pass, guy looks like a huge nerd. 100% Smash. Uh, but for the Texas thing and for the John C. Calhoun thing, though, I think I'm going to have to put him in D tier. Um, I think that there's a lot of room for improvement. Like, for example, he didn't end slavery, even though he didn't like it. And that moves us on to Andrew Jackson. Now, pros about Andrew Jackson. Um, he was anti-corruption. That was a thing that he was into. He was kind of billing himself as a man of the people. Um, so I guess that's something. We'll say on the cons list, slave owner, obviously that's, that's a, that's a no-go. That's a hard pass. Is responsible for one of the worst ethnic cleansing campaigns of indigenous people in American history. Not a fan. He also got rid of America's central bank and turned it into the financial disaster that it is today. And also he was from a town that's on the border of North and South Carolina. And I don't like that we don't know which Carolina to blame for him. So not a fan, big con. Um, as far as Smasher Pass, the fact that his nickname was Old Hickory does make me intrigued, but he also murdered a guy in a duel, which I'm really not into. And I don't think that I could really, uh, you know, get excited for somebody who committed such a large ethnic cleansing campaign. So I'm going to have to go with pass on this one. And because of the ethnic cleansing campaign, I do think that Andrew Jackson's probably going to be relegated to F tier. And afterwards, we have Martin Van Buren. Martin Van Buren hated slavery, already off to a good start. But unfortunately, he was from New York, which I think we can all agree is a terrible thing. But also is the person responsible basically for making the Democratic Party. I mean, we, no one likes that. He also ran some concentration camps for Cherokee people and proceeded to follow up on Andrew Jackson's ethnic cleansing campaign. But on the Smasher Pass question, his nickname was Old Public Functionary, which intrigues me quite a bit. He also was known for having a meticulous attention to detail. Could be something. But let's get a look at that. Oh, oh, Smash, Smash, like... Not even, not even a question. Though I think for all of the things he did with the ethnic cleansing, I'm still going to have to put him in F tier. But next we've got William Henry Harrison, who I think might be the best president in American history. William Henry Harrison is an amazing president. I think that he should be the model that all presidents follow. That's because after doing a three-hour inaugural address in the winter with no coat on, he caught pneumonia and died 32 days in the office. He had no time to actually do any of the horrible things that essentially come with being president. And 32 days is quite the record, but it is a record meant to be broken. Though I will say there are a couple bad things about him. First of all, he did unfortunately still serve as president for 32 days. The guy was from Indiana. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. A Hoosier president just feels wrong, doesn't it? Mike Pence. Now, as far as Smasher Pass, a night with him would either be really long or really short. Given that he died only 32 days into office, that makes me think that he's a bit of like, you know, a, a very quick in and out kind of guy. But he also gave a three hour inaugural address, which does imply that he has some stamina. So... Hmm, I think we're gonna have to go with a smash on this one. I'm curious. Obviously for his immense accomplishments as president and for setting the model that all presidents should strive for, I'm gonna bestow upon Henry Harrison S tier. Best president in American history, no doubt. Now Harrison was followed up by John Taylor Thomas or John Tyler, as he liked to be called with his friends. John Tyler ruled for basically a whole term as president without winning a single election. Also, when he did run for president, he left his political party and founded his own, which he called the Tyler Party. Gotta love a man with confidence, huh? Um, as for cons, he was an expansionist, a slave owner. Uh, he made it harder for slaves to escape on British ships. He is responsible for annexing Oregon and Washington, which, the Oregon and Washington. Oh. He admitted Florida 
as a state into the Union. Furthermore, not only did he add Florida, he also annexed Texas. Now on Smasher Pass, I do have to point out that John Tyler is on the record for fathering more children than any other president in American history which means that the guy was certainly a machine. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to smash, and for this one, I think I'm gonna need a Gatorade. Unfortunately, slave owner, expansionist, adding a bunch of states into the union, gotta give him F tier for this. Not not a good president, not, not a fan, gotta say. Uh, going from not good to not good, let's talk about James Polk, the next president here. Um, pros, he liked railroads, and I do know that my audience loves trains. Hey, James Polk made railroads. Can't have, can't have trains without those. Now, cons, he is unfortunately from North Carolina. And also, he did that whole Mexican-American War thing. Uh, the Mexican-American War was an aggressive war that was basically a naked land grab. And in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, it added a bunch of states that I think we would rather not be in the Union, like California, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and even New Mexico. And again, he was a slave owner, and I'm gonna have to repeat because it's been minutes since the last time I pointed it out, and someone in the comments is gonna be mad. This was a controversial thing, uh, even at the time that he was doing it. Polk actually bought his slaves in secret because he didn't want it getting out that he was doing it. Now, Smasher Pass, he does have the Victorian mullet, I think is what I'm gonna call it, but his expansionism and his war makes me think that he's a bit of a selfish lover, and he owned slaves pass instant pass now for the mexican-american war i'm also going to unfortunately i know this is strange in this case but i think i'm gonna have to put him in f tier i just don't think his presidency is worth saving unfortunately but i will say there's another great president that did follow him up his name is zachary taylor let's talk a little bit about zachary taylor Zachary Taylor might be the second best president in American history, the reason being that he died a year into office. That's not quite Harrison numbers, but it's quite impressive. He also personally opposed the expansion of slavery into U.S. territory, which I feel like shouldn't be a controversial opinion today. And I'm afraid to look at Twitter to find out if it actually is, which is going to make it very awkward when I point out that the first con is that he was himself a slave owner and is also responsible for the Compromise of 1850, which, again instead of taking a strong stance against slavery, just preserved the institution in the United States for a few more years until it basically blew up in a civil war. Now on the Smasher Pass question, he was a military strategist, which might make things interesting, but also could result in him doing some sort of like, you know, thinking he has to have game, you know, alpha male stuff, like he has to like push a series of buttons or something in order to achieve people for liaisons. I gotta keep myself monetized here. And let's not forget, like all military strategists in the bedroom, he would require a 21-gun salute so that he feels uh, brave enough to uh, perform. Now, that's a lot of people in one bedroom. Smash. I don't have to explain myself. I would put Tyler as C tier. I do think that he has a lot of promise. If he could have died sooner, I think he could have gotten up to B, A, or even S tier. All right. Now for the one that you've all been waiting for, President Millard Fillmore. Yeah. <laughs> Millard Fillmore did a few great things. One, he destroyed an entire political party. Uh, how many of you can claim that? Generally, getting rid of political parties sounds like a pretty good idea. So yeah, killed the Whig party. We're down. And also, infrastructure fan. Unfortunately, uh, later on, after his time as president, he would be a supporter of Andrew Johnson, who might be one of the worst presidents in American history. He also tried to force open Japanese trade, which might imply that he's a weeb. And he actively tried to not make a stand on slavery when that was the biggest issue of the day. And again, refusing to do anything to free millions of people who are living in bondage under his own uh, leadership. Because of that, I think that under the Smasher Pass question, he seems kind of weak and inept. All of this makes me think that he was a bit of a centrist. And so, I, no, just say no to centrist. And because he's one of the presidents responsible for leading America to civil war, let's also put him in F tier. I think he belongs there with the other presidents down there. Now, if you thought that Millard Fillmore was a big deal, we go from hit to hit with this guy, Franklin Pierce. Uh, don't you all remember Franklin Pierce? Honestly, under my research, I could not find any uh, pros 
for this. He's generally known as a really bad president who didn't really do anything. Uh, he was extremely horny for slavery, is responsible for the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which is another uh, compromise that kicked the can down the road about expanding slavery and is one of the key events leading to the escalation of tensions leading to the American Civil War. And he's from New Hampshire, which I don't think I need to describe why that's bad. I also learned, this is for the Smasher Pass question, that he was a whiskey guy. And I gotta say, I'm not a fan of drinking hard liquor straight like that. I, mm, no. And also, he'd probably be obnoxious about it too. Pass. And F tier. Get out of here. Get out of here, Franklin Pierce. No one wants you here. Next, we've got James Buchanan, who also didn't do a whole lot, but I've got a couple uh, key things. Uh, one, there's a serious amount of historical speculation that he might have been uh, asexual or he might have actually had a bit more of a relationship with one of his uh, special friends who was very close to him during his life because he wasn't married, never had any kids. But he was really close with a guy named William Rufus King. And there's been some speculation that the two of them might have been very close. There was also a movie about him in which he was played by René Aubergenois, otherwise known as Odo. And as a huge D Space Nine fan, I, I, I gotta give him points for that. As far as cons go, though, he was a fan of states' rights, which I think we all remember. States' rights. He also ensured that the Dred Scott decision went through, a horrible Supreme Court decision that essentially stripped human rights away from enslaved people, what little they had, and not only added Kansas to the United States, but added Kansas as a slave state. And like for, he was from Pennsylvania. I don't think I need to describe to you why that's terrible. Plus he's also responsible for adding Oregon and Minnesota to the United States. Like, come on. But out of respect on Smasher Pass, I will say, because he might have been ace, I will pass, but without comment. Still gonna put him in F tier, though. Next up, we have, uh, Abraham Lincoln. I don't, I don't know this one. Um, he apparently ended slavery and won the American Civil War. Fine. Um, too easy on the Confederates after the Civil War. That's not great. It's also from Illinois, which I don't think I need to describe to you why that one's bad. And also was the first Republican president and made them relevant. Uh, oh, that's not fun. Smash or pass, though. I do love me a stovepipe hat. He's also apparently very tall. I think I'll give him a smash. And you know what? I'm feeling generous. Why don't we put him in B tier? He did serve more than one term technically, but I feel like I can't let somebody who ended slavery walk away with anything lower than B tier. His successor, on the other hand, Andrew Johnson. Ugh. Pros about Andrew Johnson. Cons. He essentially undid, or at least tried to undo, all of the projects that the Republicans did in the South to have an equitable reconstruction. And he tried to stop reconstruction anywhere he could. There was a real chance of creating a true representational multiracial democracy in America, especially in the American South, and he did his best to ensure that didn't happen. He was also an expansionist. Now, when it comes to the smash or pass question, he also is apparently a fan of debate, and I just can't with debate bros, so pass instantly. Um, X tier. This is X, the word, like, ugh, garbage. No. Now, Ulysses S. Grant, on the other hand, not only did President Grant, while he was commander of the Union troops during the Civil War, destroy a lot of Confederate stuff. Cool. He also was responsible and advocated strongly for the 15th Amendment to the Constitution, which ensures a whole bunch of rights for formerly enslaved black people. He also made Yellowstone Park, was a supporter of women's suffrage. And to get around accusations that he was anti-Semitic, he appointed over 50 Jewish people to government appointments. He also proposed, unfortunately he didn't get, a constitutional amendment that would have limited religious indoctrination in public schools. Lovely, Grant, my good boy. He also crushed the Ku Klux Klan. And who could, who could be, against that. Now, unfortunately, he was from Ohio, and we've already discussed why that's a problem. He also, through the Postal Service, discriminated against what he called indecent pornographers, which I dislike all of this sex negativity going on in 19th century America. He was also an expansionist. He tried to annex the Dominican Republic. He also vetoed a bill protecting the bison population, thinking that overhunting them to near extinction would uh, force indigenous people to assimilate. Ew. 
Um, also, his administration was, I could only say, absurdly corrupt. Like, to an extent that you couldn't believe. On Smasher Pass, he is also another whiskey guy. But he is? Oh, he is one of my problematic faves. So, uh, Smash. D tier. Now, following up, we've got Rutherford B. Hayes. Boss name. Love me a Rutherford. He also was anti-corruption, try to ditch the spoil system, which was sort of basically open political corruption in America at the time. He also vetoed the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was an attempt to pass a law that would essentially curtail immigration from China, or basically anybody in Asia, really. But it still passed after he left office, so, you know, it was only going to get them so far. Rutherford B. Hayes, though, is most well known for ending Reconstruction and essentially selling out millions of black people to a hundred years of Jim Crow laws. And yeah, that, that that's not really excusable. He also was a supporter of the gold standard, which like we're bimetallism fans here at Step Back. He also used federal troops to break a railroad strike. He sold off Native American land and also did some more ethnic cleansing while he was at it in the West. On the Smasher Pass question, he also was a teetotaler, didn't like drinking, which I gotta say, I've got way too much social anxiety to do a dry date like this with somebody. So I'm gonna have to pass. And yeah, for all the, all the bad things, I think I'm going to have to put this one in F tier. Nah, can't do it. I'm sorry. <coughs> going to get white lunga from this. Now, the guy who followed him up was James A. Garfield, who I made a video about. Again, when it comes to Garfield, great length of presidency. He died very shortly after getting elected. Can't complain about that. Not only did he die early into office, most of the time he was in office, he spent slowly dying from an infection he got after he was shot. He tried to remove the spoil system, which led to him getting shot, and also was an anti-corruption measure, so I'm on board with this one. He was also a fan of civil rights and didn't like that Reconstruction ended, so yeah, we like him. Cons? I don't really have any notes, honestly. For Smasher Pass, I was able to find out that Garfield was ambidextrous, which there's all sorts of creative utilizations of that. Though he was also a teacher of Greek and Latin, which is definite beta behavior. Smash. Smash. 100% smash. Also, I think I'm going to put him in A tier. Again, great length of presidency. Uh, is a model for other presidents to follow. And now we'll move on to the sexual powerhouse that is Chester A. Arthur. A big person on anti-corruption stuff and also had a debilitating disease that made it really hard for him to do his job for most of his presidency, which is always a good job. Love somebody who's terrible at being president, a job that is basically actively doing harm to others. Uh, major problems, though. He is from Vermont. Uh, God, awful. He was also anti-immigration, is responsible for passing the Chinese Exclusion Act. He also increased the size of the Navy and used an executive order to open up more indigenous land for settlers. As for Smasher Pass, he was known for having very good fashion. That's not nothing. He also kept a very finely waxed mustache. The only thing, though, is that he was like fancy, but maybe he would have been like too fancy. You know what I mean? Mustache, though. Smash. Smash. Instant smash. I'm sorry. But for all the other things, F tier. Can't do it. Can't do it. Next, we've got Grover Cleveland. Interesting. Good name. We love me a Grover. Very Victorian name there. Uh, apparently a non-interventionist. Unfortunately, he was from New Jersey, and he also vetoed a bunch of private pension bills that would have helped out American Civil War vets. Weird hill to die on there. He also passed the Scott Act, which uh, forbid Chinese immigrants from returning to the country if they ever left. He also used federal troops as strike breakers during the Pullman strike. And is unfortunately responsible for adding Utah to the United States as a state. I gotta say, vetoing so much, that's really like controlling behavior. I'm gonna have to pass. I don't really like that kind of thing. And I'm gonna have to give him an F tier because all of the things. All right, next up we have Benjamin Harrison. Okay, Benjamin Harrison. I like the name so far. Harrison shows a lot of promise. The last Harrison, of course, the best president in American history. But let's see. Did do the Antitrust Act. Uh, Pro-civil rights. Also nice. Massacred over a hundred hundred CU people, also responsible for building America's first battleship. Mm. Now, as far as Smasher Pass goes, he was nicknamed the Human Iceberg for being so rigid and formal, and he was the first president to get electricity put into the White House, but he was afraid to touch anything electric. Mm. Smash. 
Um, this is an unlikely smash here. I will say the massacring of the CU people does put him down to F tier, objectively, obviously. And for 24, we're going to have Grover Cleveland again. Okay, instantly, a president having two non-consecutive terms makes me have to remember a new thing. And I can barely remember anything, so fail. This is bad. First of all, two terms, self-absorbed behavior, toxic, toxic red flag. Hard pass, downgrade to G tier. Now let's move on to William McKinley. I got one pro for him, which is that he did not finish his second term. It was abruptly cut short by him getting shot. Also, he did a fake ass war on Spain in order to try and conquer more territory and flex more American power abroad. He annexed Hawaii, which essentially became this like racial apartheid state for a while before it became part of the United States. It has been hell on the indigenous people of Hawaii ever since. He also let down a lot of his black supporters, didn't do much for them. And on top of that, also annexed Alaska. And for Smasher Pass, he was an advocate of the gold standard, which means he was probably a libertarian, which means I'm going to have to pass. And also because of his war of colonial aggression, he's going to have to get an F. I'm sorry. I know that I don't give out many of those, but in this case, I think it's really bad. Luckily, though, we have afterwards Theodore Roosevelt. Now that, that is a president uh, known as being the trust buster for breaking up giant monopolies and also for putting in basic safety regulations for food and drugs. He also had a little bit of a belief in conserving the environment. I think that's all really good. Cons, though, he did basically wuss out on having dinners with Booker T. Washington, which would have said a lot and would have given him a lot of key insight that he could have done to make life better for black Americans. He was also an imperialist, like openly. I will have to say though, on the Smasher Pass question, things get a bit more interesting. When he ran in his own political party, when he left the Republicans and ran against Taft in 1912, he did call his party the Bull Moose Party. Furthermore, he also is known for saying, speak softly and carry a big stick. I think both of these say exactly what we think it's trying to say. I'm gonna have to give him a smash because I need to know. But I will say for his imperialism, I think I'm gonna have to give him an F tier. I apologize for that. Now he was followed up by William Taft, William Howard Taft. Taft might've been a little bit of a sweet boy early into his term. His wife suffered a stroke and he spent many, many, many hours in his day uh, taking care of her and trying to rehabilitate her so that she could learn to speak again, which I think is very sweet. He also pushed for a lot more antitrust stuff that Roosevelt pushed for. Unfortunately, he did say that he wasn't going to appoint to any position any African-Americans in places where it would cause friction. And in response to that, he basically fired every single presidential appointment job in the South that was held by a black person. And even in the North, he gave very few appointments to black people. On the Smasher Pass question, I do think that that story of Taft not being able to get out of the bathtub could have a different connotation. He was also known for taking a lot of naps, which honestly, same, and even uh, would doze off during public functions. That amount of disrespect for authority has to at least get you a little bit of credit. So smash. Yeah, smash. F tier, but smash. All right. Let's move on to Woodrow Wilson, good old Woody Wilson. Uh, pros, he appointed William Jennings Bryan as his vice president, who was uh, one of the most important left-wing leaders in American history. He also signed the Revenue Act of 1913, which implemented the country's first income tax and permanently pissed off libertarians, which I appreciate. He created the FTC. He tried to end child labor. At the end of World War I, he pushed for his 14 points, which was focused around national self-determination, at least for white people. He was around for the passing of the 19th Amendment, which allowed for women to vote. And bonus, his last year in office, he had a stroke and basically did not perform his duties as president for that year, which I can appreciate. As for cons though, uh, Woodrow Wilson, I could only describe as being absurdly racist. He took a recently desegregated White House and resegregated it. He also screened Birth of a Nation in the White House, which is like the most racist movie ever made. He invaded Mexico twice. He invaded the Dominican Republic. He invaded Haiti. He's responsible for the Palmer Raids, which was a anti-left-wing and also anti-Semitic, anti-immigration a roundup of a bunch of immigrants associated with leftist movements and deported them out of the country. Even people who had moved over stateside 
when they were children, like say, I don't know, uh, where is she? Emma Goldman over there? Is she in the? She's not even in the shot. Never mind. He also was responsible for passing prohibition, which nah. Dude was racist and elitist. I'm going to give him a pass. And furthermore, F tier. He did a lot of good things, but he did a lot more bad things. Pass. Now, let's talk about Warren G. Harding. Warren G. Harding did send famine aid to the Soviet Union, which was a spicy take to do. He also commuted Eugene Debs's sentence, Eugene Debs being the leader of uh, America's uh, progressive party at the time. He was also the first sitting American president to visit Canada, which I guess I have to appreciate as a Canadian. He also died in office, which as you all know, is a big plus for me. Unfortunately, he's also responsible for the National Highway Act, which was some of the first steps towards destroying uh, rail as the primary mode of transportation and getting more obsessed with cars. He was fiercely anti-labor. Also, he's one of the first Republican presidents to begin the process of triangulating and seeing that a loss of black voters in the South was not so bad a thing if they could find a new way to appeal to more racist people to win the South, which is essentially the beginning of the modern day Republican Party strategy today. He's also responsible for the Percentum Act of 1921, which was another restriction on immigration. As for smash or pass, I would smash on the eyebrows alone. He also had uh, a mistress who he wrote many letters to in which he referred to his penis as Jerry. Um, I'll put him as F tier for all the other things, but God damn, that's a horny president. As for the 30th president, uh, Calvin Coolidge, uh, pros. So when he found out that Harding had died, he was sworn into office at like 2.45 in the morning. And the first thing he did after being uh, declared president of the United States was go back to bed. <laughs> Total Chad move, 100% approve. Unfortunately, he was anti-regulation, believed in scientific taxation, which was essentially regressive taxation, which is, uh, you know, voodoo bullshit. And when a bunch of farmers were struggling, he refused to do anything to help them. As far as smash or pass, absolute dud. Yeah, F tier, blah. Nothing, no, no great things to report about. All right, now let's talk about Herbert Hoover. Um, which is one of the more fun president's names to say. He was the president at the beginning of the uh, Great Depression and is responsible for passing the Glass-Steagall Act, which was the beginning of a bunch of bank regulations that would uh, protect the American banking system basically up until uh, Bill Clinton got rid of it in the 90s and it led to a series of decisions that led to the 2008 recession. Cool, love that for us. Another pro I would say is that he's responsible for ending prohibition, which like, sweet, great. Awesome idea. That's kind of where the good things end because he was known for majorly botching the response to the depression. In response to an economic downturn, he decided to lower taxes and reduce spending, two things that are essentially the opposite of what you want to be doing during a fiscal crisis. And while Americans were hurting really bad, there was this idea of trying to give relief checks to Americans, which was a thing that Hoover refused to do. And in his efforts to try and control the downward economic spiral, he inadvertently made it even worse and started a trade war with Canada, France, and a bunch of other countries. Despite the fact that the gold standard was one of the causes of the depression, he refused to abandon it and denounced any other type of monetary system as, quote, collectivist, as if that was a bad thing. He also was unwilling to push for a federal anti-lynching law, which was a major problem at the time, and in what was called the Lily White strategy, in order to uh, gain some power back from the Democrats in the South, he essentially fired every single black person who was in a position of leadership within the Republican Party in the South. It's not too surprising that in the 1932 election, uh, black people in the South largely switched to the Democratic Party. They became part of the New Deal coalition and essentially abandoned the Republican Party uh, to this day. Also, he started a process of during the 1930s deporting over a million Mexican-Americans back to Mexico, despite the fact that like 60% of them were birthright citizens uh, and had like, you know, constitutional rights to be citizens of the United States. But because they were brown, they were sent to Mexico anyway. And also, if you were to look at it objectively, it really fits a lot of the descriptions of ethnic cleansing in modern day. But this happened in the 1930s. Smash or pass? This guy sucks. Pass, F tier. Let's get out of here. Let's go on to Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now that's a guy, I guess. Uh, pros for Franklin Roosevelt. 
the New Deal. Like, come on. It's one of the most ambitious economic reform programs in American history, if not the most. And it's probably one of the things that kept America from completely falling apart in the 30s. He had a Republican Supreme Court that tried to refuse all of his economic interventions. So he just bullied them by threatening basically a maximum age for Supreme Court justices. And if that didn't work, he was just going to start appointing more and more and more justices because you don't actually have to have nine. You can have as many as you want until he had enough Supreme Court justices that would approve his programs. He expanded the national park system. He killed Nazis. He actually respected the sovereignty of Latin America for the most part. He ran for a third term, which trolled the norms, which I'm very happy for. And he also signed an executive order which forbid discriminating based on religion in government contracts. He was also married to Eleanor Roosevelt, who was pretty based in her own right. So, you know, wins all around. Though there are some downsides. There are cons for Franklin Roosevelt, unfortunately. Uh, black people largely left out of that New Deal uh, while everybody else was getting all the benefits of this economic reconstruction. Um, black people did not see much of that. He also greenlit the Manhattan Project, which created the world's first nuclear bomb, which that fucking sucks. Also, those uh, Mexican, quote, repatriation policies that Hoover put in place, Roosevelt kept doing. He's also responsible for the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, which was a horrible racist practice that was one of the unforgivable sins that the U.S. and Canada did during the war and should really never be forgotten. He also had the opportunity during the uh, years leading up to World War II to uh, open up immigration to more Jewish people trying to escape from Nazi Germany. But because he didn't, and didn't make an effort to save Jewish refugees, uh, he refused to save what is estimated to be about 190,000 Jewish lives. And in 1943, he even told government officials that they should limit the amount of appointments of Jewish people to important positions in order to, quote, avoid the same animosity towards Jews that happened in Germany, which is a wild way to think. As far as Smasher Pass, I don't think I could do that to Eleanor. So I'm going to have a respectful pass and this is what's going to be a spicy one but because of all of the racism shit i'm gonna have to put him in f tier it sucks because the new deal is like one of the best things that happened to the united states but there's just too much shitty stuff i'm sorry f here's a super easy f though and that is harry truman the person who followed him as far as pros go um he didn't like mccarthyism and he was generally in favor of civil rights i guess but he needlessly nuked Japan after Japan had attempted to surrender several times. He ordered the development of even bigger nukes after seeing the destruction that it wrought upon the Japanese people. To stop a railroad strike, he proposed drafting all the rail workers into the military where he could then force them under penalty of prison to work. He also started the Cold War uh, and like the military buildup that led to America becoming the absolute nightmare military state it is today. And just to top it all off, he was from Missouri, which again, I don't have to describe why that is a terrible thing. Smasher Pass though, I do like that he used to play piano, but I don't like that he seemed to have this weird like imposter syndrome, inadequacy thing. It's not attractive, hard pass. F tier, let's go on to Dwight Eisenhower. Now, Eisenhower, despite being a conservative Republican, did have a few cool things that he did. One is that although it wasn't successful, he did attempt to have a nuclear disarmament talk with the Soviet Union, which this is what he called the Atmos for Peace process. And also he enforced anti-segregation laws, uh, the Supreme Court decisions that uh, Brown v. Board of Education, which determined that segregation was not uh, constitutionally viable. But the uh, the Democratic states in the South and the like, you know, segregationists refused to follow this. So he sent in the National Guard to intervene on behalf of desegregating schools. Awesome moves. Unfortunately, he's responsible for the interstate highway system, which led to America's further dependence on cars and away from trains which is not great. Car bad, right? He also is the person who started domino theory, which was this idea that communism would spread and needed to be contained. Um, this led to America getting involved in a bunch of disastrous wars and further administrations. And on top of that, in his attempt to avoid like open wars, he got into a lot of small CIA black ops operations that largely overthrew democratically elected leaders and put in US friendly right-wing dictators. Here's just a few examples.
examples. You got Mossadegh in Iran. You've got Arbenz in Guatemala. You've got the assassination of Patrice Lumumba, and he is the person behind planning the Bay of Pigs in an attempt to overthrow Castro. He also legitimized America's relationship with Francisco Franco, who was the fascist dictator of Spain, is responsible for the Lavender Scare, which was basically an attempt to use fear of communism to hunt down and fire all gay people within the public service. He's also unfortunately responsible for uh, adding Alaska and Hawaii to the U.S. as states. And the worst crime of all, he's from Texas. But on the all-important Smasher Pass, which can greatly change someone's score, he was known for being funny. He liked to grill. You know, he was grill-pilled. That's pretty sweet. Unfortunately, I think he looks way too much like my grandpa, which um, just makes me uncomfortable. I'm going to have to pass. Uh, for the overthrowing of a bunch of democratically elected leaders, I'm going to have to put Eisenhower under F tier for this one. Let's follow it up with JFK. Oh yeah. John F. Kennedy. Uh, he served for less than one term, which is always a bonus. He was popular with the youths and he stayed the death penalty federally. And the United States actually didn't, uh, execute anybody at the federal level for multi- Dec for multiple decades after this. He was a supporter of civil rights, although he didn't really have a whole lot of uh, energy put behind that. And he led an overthrow of the American immigration system, which got rid of national quotas and uh, made it generally uh, less racist. Cons, though, in an attempt to appear strong on foreign policy, he was needlessly antagonistic with the Soviet Union. Uh, this included installing nuclear weapons in Turkey, which is right at the border with Russia. The Soviet Union responded to these missiles being put in Turkey by putting missiles in friendly Cuba, which led to a international incident that probably got us as close as we ever got to the end of the world. He's also responsible for the Bay of Pigs debacle. He's responsible for starting the Vietnam War. Uh, he lowered taxes, which had been at 90% plus for people who made over a million dollars. He reduced those drastically to unsustainable levels, uh, especially on the rich and on corporations, which led to this downward spiral of losing federal revenue and uh, everyone responding about, oh, we have no money to balance the budget because they cut all the taxes to all the people taking all the money and led to this sort of growing inequality. And in response to lower revenue, uh, a spiraling program of austerity, which led to this point where like America can't seem to be able to do even basic state functions except for our big military. He also was responsible for constructing a dam that flooded a bunch of territory that belonged to the Seneca people. And that led 600 Seneca people to have to relocate. For Smasher Pass, he seems like he was charming, but like in kind of like a smarmy way, you know? I do have to say that like in all of the presidents in American history, he's like one of two that you could consider hot. So I feel like I would miss out by not saying Smash on this one. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to put him in D tier on this one. That's my vibe. Now, Lyndon B. Johnson's a whole different story, right? Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, uh, first pro, this tape exists. But see if you can't leave me about it. an age from the, where the zipper ends uh, round uh, under my, back to my bunghole. His focus as president was also to implement a war on poverty, which I'm all here for. While JFK was generally supportive of civil rights, Lyndon B. Johnson actually got that civil rights bill passed. He pushed for great society programs, which greatly increased the standard of living for Americans, especially those in the lowest ends of the economic uh, spectrum. And he did put in the Voting Rights Act, which is also a great thing. Um, Cons was really stuck in the sunken cost fallacy about the Vietnam War and uh, his essential like focus on the Vietnam War really undermined all of his uh, domestic accomplishments. He also was a strong believer in domino theory, which led to America dedicating itself to things like Vietnam to its own detriment. For Smasher Pass though, I am actually intimidated by the raw sexual power that is Lyndon B. Johnson. There's, and I'm not even joking about this, there is legitimate evidence that the man was packing. Um, Smash, obviously. I'm also gonna give him C tier because the Great Society was pretty based. So smashed C tier. Um, let's move on to, oh no, no, no. Oh God, okay. Richard Nixon. <laughs> Richard, Richard Milhouse Nixon. Now I get to say whether or not I would bone Richard Nixon. This is a thing that I intentionally chose to do with my life. All right, pros. Um, 
He sought peace with China. That was pretty cool. Rolled back the Vietnam War, passed Salt One, which is like a uh, like a rollback on like uh, you know the building, the stockpiling of nuclear missiles with the Soviet Union. Uh, he ended the gold standard, and also had something of an environmental policy. In fact, the EPA started under Nixon's presidency. Cons, Secretary of State was fucking Henry Kissinger, who has a special level of hell waiting for him when he eventually makes his way down there. He was responsible for the coup in Chile, which put in a fascist dictator who killed tens of thousands of people and made the country a right-wing hellhole that it still struggles with to this day. Also, like, Nixon was, like, super duper racist. Like, ridiculously racist. And is one of the chief beneficiaries of the Southern strategy, where the Republicans openly appealed to white supremacists in the South in order to flip the states down there. And also the war on drugs, which led to uh, the oppression of tons of people of color in the United States, which continues again to this day. And I guess, like, Watergate or something. As far as smash or pass, Nixon was very insecure. Uh, he was sweaty, which I empathize with. I'm kind of making bread dough on my forehead as we speak. Uh, his middle name was Milhouse. I'll let you draw your own conclusions on that one. I'm going to give a pass to real Nixon, but smash to Lincoln's head in Futurama. I give you the next president of Earth. <laughs> Nixon's back! And, and F tier. No government with Henry Kissinger is going to get anything else. Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford. Jerry Ford. Do you like nachos and football? Gerald Ford. Say, Homer, do you like football? Do I ever? Do you like nachos? Yes, Mr. Ford. Well, why don't you come over and watch the game and we'll have nachos? And then some beer. Um, he didn't even finish a single term, which I'm already a fan of. He put through amnesty for draft dodgers. So people who refused to fight in Vietnam who went to other countries. Um, cool. I'm on board with that one. And he was also pro-vaccine. There was a flu epidemic that happened during his presidency and he was behind pushing for a vaccine program. Cool. Um, that extremely low uh, bar for standards is, uh, is a plus now because we live in hell. Cons, he did pardon Nixon, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, Smasher Pass, he was known for being pretty athletic. I think he played football in college or something like that. And he was also known for actually being pretty friendly. Um, I'm being generous. I'm gonna give him a polite smash. Uh, let's give him D tier too, because, you know, limited amounts of damage. All right, let's move on. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Carter. Uh, pros for Jimmy Carter. Um, put solar panels on the White House. That's pretty cool. Uh, he also hated Congress. The Democratic Party hated him. And also Congress, like, in general hated him, which, um, I too hate Congress, so... Uh, we have that in common. Cons, he did basically turn the Democratic Party into a second conservative party in the United States. And now America basically gets a choice between two very right wing political parties every election. And that fucking sucks. Because of the like invasion of Afghanistan, he's also somewhat responsible for making Al Qaeda, um, you know, unintended consequences. But, you know, um, smash or pass. This is where things get complicated because... Um, Jimmy Carter's still alive and doing Smasher Pass on living presidents is going to be a little weird, but um, that's okay. If Jimmy Carter ever watches this YouTube video, um, I'm sorry, I guess. He was a peanut farmer. I'm a big fan of peanuts, like them myself. Uh, he was a way better ex-president than he was president. Uh, he's done a lot of pretty base shit after being president. Unfortunately, his presidency was pretty terrible. Um, he does do a lot of stuff like, you know, working for Habitat for Humanity and all that stuff. Um, he just seems to be a pretty, like, overall sweet guy. So I am think I'm going to go with a smash on this one. F tier president, but smash. And then we get to <laughs> Ronnie Reagan. Ronald fucking Reagan. All right. Um, pros. Ronald Reagan pros. Um, he signed into existence Martin Luther King Day. Uh, he didn't at the beginning, but by the end of his presidency, he was pursuing better relationships with the USSR. Him and Gorbachev actually, um, got along near the end of his presidency. Apparently, the story goes that Reagan, uh, saw this, like, movie, I'm trying to remember what it was called, but it was this movie where, uh, that basically shows, like, the real impacts of nuclear war. It was, like, a dramatization of real nuclear war, uh, that they played in a bunch of schools, 
in the 80s and apparently scared the bejesus out of a bunch of kids, gave a bunch of kids nightmares. Um, Reagan saw this and apparently it really got to him and he became like really uh, like uh, kind of spooked about nuclear weapons in like his second term and uh, pursued uh, attempts to have better relations with the, the Soviet Union and to sort of uh, thaw the Cold War out a little bit during the, the his presidency. But um, but that's where the pros end because he basically sold America on this insane form of economic nonsense known as neoconservatism and neoliberalism. Um, tried to convince people that somehow cutting taxes for the rich was a way to make everybody more money uh, with absolutely no evidence. And despite the fact that it has no evidence, in fact, quite contrary evidence to this day, it's still a uh, religious belief that a lot of Americans on both sides of the political spectrum still adhere to. And that had essentially nightmarish effects on the whole world to the point where I'd probably put him as like the third or fourth most destructive president in American history. He was for deregulation. He was anti-labor. He pushed for the war on drugs. He, uh, even though he tried to decelerate the Cold War in his second term, he was responsible for accelerating the Cold War in his first term. He invaded Granada. He ignored the AIDS pandemic, despite the fact that, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of his people were dying. He was also a supporter of apartheid in South Africa. Um, I feel like at this point, I just need like an entire video about how bad Ronald Reagan was. <laughs> For Smasher Pass, immediately no. Immediately no. No. Pa pass, no. Reagan, awful. Like, X-tier president. Fuck off. Uh, George H.W., uh, some bonuses. I think that he, it's pretty cool that he only served for one term. Uh, it'd be better if he served for zero terms, but uh, one term is less than Reagan, so we'll go with that. Uh, he is actually responsible for passing the Americans with Disabilities Act, which, you know, that's not nothing. That's pretty good. That is a, uh, a law that has been used to improve living conditions for a lot of Americans who live with disabilities. Also, he helped amend the Clean Air Act because this was slightly before the time that Republicans decided they don't believe in climate change. Um because oil companies hadn't started bribing them into not believing that yet. So there was a little bit of movement on climate change that was happening, especially um, in like his early presidency, there was stuff to do with like uh, chlorofluorocarbons and like the ozone layer, which actually was pretty effective. But when it came to uh, getting off oil, that's when all of a sudden the money told him he wasn't allowed to do that. And also unwittingly, he was featured in one of the best Simpsons episodes ever made. Yoo-hoo! Who is it? It's your sons, George Bush Jr. and Jeb Bush. Come outside, Dad. Oh, good. Bar, the boys are out in the front yard. They'll help me think of a plan to get those Simpsons. Boys, where are you going? Okay, son. Give them the glue. <laughs> Cons, though. He bombed the shit out of Panama. He invaded Iraq. He started NAFTA. And he appointed Clarence Thomas a terrible and also extremely corrupt uh, Supreme Court justice to the Supreme Court. And also somebody who seems to have, uh, you know, committed a fair chunk of sexual harassment. Uh, so the only way that he got elected or the only way that Clarence Thomas got to the Supreme Court was through George Bush's appointment and the help of one Joseph Robinette Biden, who uh, basically like slut shamed and attacked Anita Hill, the person who accused Clarence Thomas on the stand. And now... Now he's president. Smasher Pass, he's a former troop, which, you know, ick. Uh, he also once vomited during a state dinner in Japan, which I think was kind of funny. But he did love colorful socks. F tier, but smash. All right, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton did pass the Brady Act, which did mandate background checks for firearms purchases. That's like one of the closest things that America got to some sort of gun control measure. He also lifted the ban on getting security clearances for LGBT federal employees. And he also outlawed discrimination based on sexual orientation within the federal service, at least on the civilian level. We'll get into something else later. Um, also responsible for signing NAFTA into power. He was the final form of the Democratic Party transforming into its modern incarnation of essentially being a uh, right-wing conservative political party. Uh, alongside the even more right-wing, even more conservative political party. He implemented Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which, while he banned discrimination based on sexual orientation in the civilian federal service, uh, it was still perfectly fine to discriminate against uh, people's sexual orientation in the military. Uh, they just weren't allowed to check for it. 
Uh, but if it ever came to light one way or another, or if those people ever lived openly, then they could still be discharged just for the crime of being gay. He also pushed out the Omnibus Crime Bill, which is responsible for funneling tons of people of color into prisons. He signed the Defense of Marriage Act, which was a uh, homophobic law designed to uh, basically, you know, define marriage as between a man and a woman. He also signed the IIR IRA, which was another major crackdown on immigration. And by that, I mean a lot. He cut immigration from about 800,000 people to like 550,000 people. And he repealed Glass-Steagall, which was one of the things that banks had to follow in order to keep them from gambling with other people's money. And we learned how well that turned out now, didn't we? We've had an eight-day losing streak in the Dow that in percentage terms puts it on par, close to the loss suffered in that crash in 1987, close to that percentage loss those two days in 1929. Also, there was the Rwandan genocide that happened under his presidency in which Bill Clinton chose to do nothing about it. As far as smash or a pass, I feel like Bill Clinton is well known for being someone who fucks and also is somebody who plays the saxophone, which is pretty cool. I gotta check out the hype, Smash, uh, but F to your present for sure. All right, we're in the home stretch. Uh, George W. Bush, pros. Pros for George W. Bush. He did increase funding for the National Science Foundation and the National Institute of Health. That's not nothing. Close to it, but not nothing. He also declared the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands as a national park and created basically the largest area on earth at that time of protected mer like ocean and also he once got hit with a shoe and it was really funny as far as cons um the whole war on terror the u.s engaged in an illegal war in iraq they uh invaded afghanistan despite the fact that it contributed nothing towards the ending of Al-Qaeda or stopping Osama bin Laden. He implemented reckless tax cuts that led America into an even more unsustainable fiscal spiral and put in a bunch of deregulations that further pushed America towards the Great Recession near the end of his presidency. He also used his veto power to stop stem cell research, which uh, set back biology and medicine for years. He completely botched the response to Hurricane Katrina, in which... Uh, tons of people needlessly died uh, or were left with nothing. And in reconstructing New Orleans after Katrina, uh, essentially turned it into a right-wing hellhole. And don't forget the other wonderful bits like implementing torture against people who were prisoners of war and the Patriot Act, which was one of the largest curtailments of American civil rights in history, which still persists to this day. As for Smasher Pass, he's got a dumb face and I swear he would have given me some sort of shitty nickname pass. Zed tier president. I'm still convinced that George W. Bush is the worst president in American history. All right, Barack Obama time. Uh, pros. Pros. Uh, Barack Obama tried to change NASA. Uh, he pushed for NASA to change its mission to focus on human spaceflight and essentially started the Ares 5 rocket program that led to America possibly going to the moon in a few years. So that's cool. He also expanded the definition of hate crimes to include gender identity and sexual orientation, which was very overdue, but very needed. He lifted a travel ban on those coming to the U.S. who were HIV positive, And he repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Unfortunately, one of his first acts as president during a huge economic downturn was to take a bunch of America's money and use it to bail out banks instead of the people who had been screwed over by those banks. Then, when trying to figure out how to rebuild the economy, he invited all of the bankers that were responsible for causing the economic downturn in the first place and used their advice to essentially do... Well, not nothing, but next to nothing. His health care plan was a limp half measure that, yes, has improved people's lives somewhat, but is a far cry from universal health care and in many ways has made people's lives not that much better. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then there's Anwar Alawaki, where uh, Obama ordered the extrajudicial murder of an American citizen uh, based on basically guilt by association. And there was Libya, where essentially the U.S. orchestrated the absolute botched destruction of this country, which is still a mess to this day. But on Smasher Pass, he is the second of the two objectively hot presidents. So I guess smash. Um, D tier, but smash. <laughs> Donald Trump. Okay. Oh boy. Donald Trump. Okay. So first of all, the wettest president in American history. I guess that's a pro. 
Also, uh, by breaking a bunch of the norms of Washington, he fundamentally broke the brains of many like center right liberals who have been freaking out and having mental breakdowns to this day, which I find kind of amusing. During COVID, despite the fact that he botched basically every other part of it, unlike the Democrats, he actually did pass a stimulus check. He also withdrew the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership Program, which was going to be like another disastrous, like free trade NAFTA neoliberal disaster, like, like, uh, and he got us out of that. Uh, and when he caught COVID, it was possibly one of the funniest times in American history. We might be like living for decades in the endless ripples of the horrible things that happened because of the Trump presidency, but we will always have those few days he had COVID and it was very funny. As for cons, scroll. <laughs> Let's see. Um, he was like overtly corrupt. Like he was like probably the most overtly corrupt presidents in history. He like had foreign dignitaries staying at his hotels and like refused to even like give up his investments when he was president. Um, he like appointed like his son-in-law and his like daughter to like important positions. And on top of that, he's also responsible for enabling an entire generation of man baby Nazis that we still have to deal with to this day. He withdrew the United States from the Paris Agreement, which was already a sort of half measure for dealing with climate change that nobody was following anyway. But just to make an extra statement, fuck the environment, he did it. Uh, Anti-regulation had this whole thing about how if you implement a new regulation, you have to get rid of two regulations, which is like an and cap nonsense. He got rid of a lot of Obama era protections uh, for LGBT people. He also executed more people in his term as president than the amount of people executed in the last 56 years combined. It was also after 17 years of not committing any federal executions. He also proposed to use the US military to crack down on protesters who were against police brutality, which is like a total dictator move. He tried to build a border wall on the Mexican border, which uh, if it had even been completed, it was not, but it would have killed lots of people uh, in the desert and is not even an effective way to curb illegal immigration because most legal immigration in America happens through people overstaying their visas. So it was just this uh, weird tribute to just pure racism and ignorance. In fact, in his attempt to curb uh, illegal immigration, it was almost entirely focused on people from Mexico and other parts of Central America, which says a lot. He deployed 6,000 American troops to the US-Mexican border. He implemented a travel ban on people from several Muslim majority countries. He implemented family separation at the border, which, you know, Biden has yet to stop, but here we go. And the end of his presidency was marked by the COVID pandemic, which was an absolute disaster. And uh, that's why, like, compared to other countries, more Americans died in proportion to the population than every other country on Earth, I'm pretty sure. And now we get to the Smasher Pass. This man is disgusting. And he wor uses words like bigly. Pass. This is the worst. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. F-tier pass. Jo Joe Biden. Jo Joseph Robinette Biden. Uh, here we go. Uh, pros. Joe Biden joined the Paris Agreement again. So that's great. Maybe it's going to become a new thing. Like every time a president switches parties or there's a switching of party presidents, they have to either join or leave the Paris Climate Agreement while we all fucking boil alive from too much burning of fossil fuels. Uh, he revoked the rights for the construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, which was a pipeline that would have shipped like fucking oil and gas uh, across the United States from Canada. Uh, Canada didn't have the fucking strength to turn on a pipeline because our liberal progressive prime minister uh, spent federal dollars to buy more pipelines because Canada is awful. Uh, he pulled out of Afghanistan, which I think was actually a very ballsy and brave move for a president and way overdue, but very much appreciated. And compared to every president in the time before, actually passed some laws that were some real movement of the needle when it came to doing stuff about climate change, like the uh, inflation reduction bill that was passed last year. Cons. Uh, Joe Biden is very responsible for the appointment of Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court, who is a famously like very right wing and very corrupt Supreme Court justice. Another con is that Joe Biden doesn't seem to know at any given time who he is or what he's doing. His brain seems to be like frying Play-Doh at the moment. And he's just being like uh, used as some like kind of figurehead for like like an apparatus of different, you know, 
politicos and uh, and aides who are really running the country. He always reminds me of like King Theoden from the Two Towers before he got Sar- Sauron's like corruption out of him, and he's just this, like old person who can't say or do anything. And then all of the the evil aides are the ones who are actually keeping the thing going. He's like basically the closest thing to like actually doing weekend at Bernie's with the president. And he also promised student loan forgiveness and did it at a time when he knew that it would fail in court just as a, uh, like an election promise, knowing that it wouldn't work. And he abandoned the COVID response way too early. Uh, What little was happening in America to do anything about COVID, they abandoned. And now COVID just runs wild and free. And on Smasher Pass, I would think that smashing with Joe Biden would be a form of elder abuse. So I'm going to pass. And even though he's not done being president yet, we'll see what happens next year. I'm going to put Joe Biden as an F-tier president. Okay, okay. I guess I guess I should probably just, like, apologize for the previous video. I imagine... Watching all of that, you're probably thinking, hmm, I could go for the end of the world just about now, and I wouldn't blame you. Anyways, uh, speaking of the end of the world, nuclear bombs. That's a segue. As regular viewers of this channel probably know, I think probably more than I should about nuclear weapons, considering that they're probably in the top two or three things that will likely make human beings go extinct. So that's fun. But also, they're a strange piece of political technology and defined a lot of the later 20th century with the Cold War essentially being a nuclear arms race over who would dominate all of the colonial countries after they broke free from their European masters. And I will say one point of huge frustration I have with the way that we talk about the history of the Cold War and of nuclear weapons in general is that we focus really, really, really hard on like the Manhattan Project and the American nuclear weapons program, mostly because a lot of Cold War histories were written or at least were framed around the United States without much access to what the Soviet Union side of things was. So I would really love if there was a history of the Soviet nuclear weapons program. And there is. That's why I'm talking to you today. (laughs) So if you like nukes, nope. If you like um, the history of the planet crackers that are likely to do us in if climate change doesn't do it first, might I recommend a really cool series called Red Atoms. Red Atoms is the history of the Soviet nuclear program, and it's done in really high quality, very good research, amazing presentation, and of course, animations that are second to none. And it's done by some of the great people over at the channel Real Time History. And if you want to watch Red Atoms, you totally can right now, Three episodes are already up on Nebula. Yeah, that's right. It's Nebula time again. Ah, yes. Nebula spot. We meet again. Yes, the series is only on Nebula. The reason for that is because Nebula is a platform owned by its own creators. Therefore, without any middleman, we have the freedom and the ability to invest in projects that we really believe in because there's no Google to promote or demote our videos. There's no Google to put ads on or off our content. There's no, I think we're gonna have to have a conversation with Google. And on Nebula, on top of all of my content ad free and a day or so early or more, if I can pull away with it, there are a lot of creators on the platform that I know there's, there's analytics and stuff that I know you like. How about that Lindsay Ellis, eh? She recently made a video about Guy Fieri. How is that not a thing that you want to watch? It's only available on Nebula, and it's awesome. You've got Big Joel, a channel I would describe as, um, a man who is lost in a endless art museum who's trying to win a war against the rule of thirds. But, you know, you got Second Thought. You got Legal Eagle. You got Jesse Gender. And I'm very excited. I know you'll be very excited, too. We recently announced that Mune Cat, the anti-scam, anti-MLM musician extraordinaire, is now also a part of Nebula, and her content will be available up there ad-free as well. But don't just do this for all the creators you love. You can also do it for me. Supporting Nebula through the link that's going to be in the description or in the pinned comment will not only get you access to all this amazing content by all of these talented people, but you also get access to my stuff, and you'll be directly supporting my work. Because for the entire time that you stay subscribed to Nebula, a portion of your subscription goes to me and supports me and keeps me paying for house and food and cat and baby and posters that turn Deep Space Nine scenes into 
pro-union propaganda. <laughs> And now, with your Nebula membership, you also get access to Nebula Classes, which was not present in past bundles. Here you'll find a lot of work of creators teaching you how to create, which is great for people who want to start getting into the creator game themselves, or if they just want to see how we make the things we make. They won't teach you how to think of great ideas like start a video with flour all over your face, but, you know, that's just my special secret sauce. Probably my favorite class on the platform is how to research like a PhD student by another creator that I know you all love, Tom Nicholas, certified English good boy. And you get all that for a pretty good price, about two and a half dollars a month if you go with the annual subscription, which I should mention gives you a 40, 40% discount. So sign up in the link in the description or pinned comment. You'd be supporting me directly, getting a steep discount on your membership by using the annual plan. And also you get hours and hours and hours of entertainment on top of it. So thank you to you on Nebula who signed up, and I apologize. So that's a thing that I spent hours, weeks of my life putting together, and you spent however long this video is watching. So yeah, happy Independence Day. Sign up for Nebula. God damn, what is this video?